In this video, I want to restate and then we'll prove the Cauchy Riemann equations. Uh, the Cauchy Riemann equations say that if you have a function f mapping an open set to the complex numbers, then that function is going to be differentiable at a point in z0 if and only if the partial of f with respect to x at z0 is equal to 1 over i times the partial of f with respect to y at z0. So this gives you a nice criteria for when the function f is going to be differentiable at a point uh, at a point z0. Uh, now, when I say we're going to prove this, I really mean that we're going to prove uh, one and a half directions. It's an if and only if statement, so we would have to prove that if f prime of z naught exists, then these equations are true. And likewise, if these equations are true, then f prime of z naught exists. Um, the first part is straightforward, and that's what we'll prove in some detail, and then we'll talk about the other part after. So let's assume that f prime of z naught exists. Okay, so we're just going to assume that that exists, and then we want to show that that equation is true. So we want to show that the equation that the partial of f with respect to x at z0 uh, is equal to 1 over i times the partial of f with respect to y. Um, well, uh, then if we look at f prime of z0, one way to think about this is that this is the limit as uh, z approaches z0 of f of z minus f of z0 over z minus z0. Okay, and so this is one way to think about the derivative of f at z0, so just the normal limit definition. And if we think about this, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm thinking about z as being, uh, let's see, z is, is uh, uh, I'm thinking about it as being x plus i y0. So z0 is going to be x0 plus i y0. This is going to end up being the limit as z approaches z0 of f of x plus i y0 minus f of x0 plus i y all over z minus z0, which is going to be x minus x0. So that's one way to talk about the derivative of f at z0. And likewise, so likewise, uh, the derivative of f at z0 is going to be equal to the limit as z approaches z0 of, let's see, how do we want to say this? The limit of, of uh, as z approaches z0. By the way, uh, I know what I was trying to say and why I stumbled here. This is, uh, if you think about it, the same as the partial of f with respect to x at z0. So that's the connection that I wanted to make there. And then we'll do the same thing, but uh, here we're going to think of z as being x naught plus i y, and then z naught is the same x naught plus i y naught. So f prime of z naught is still going to be f of z minus f of z naught over z minus z naught. And that's going to be the limit as z approaches z naught of f of x naught plus i y minus f of x naught plus i y naught all over z minus z naught, which if you look at the difference between these two, that's going to be i times y minus y naught. And so if you think about what that says, you can factor out this i here, and this is going to be 1 over i times the limit of uh, z minus z naught, f of x naught plus i y minus f of x naught plus i y naught over y minus y naught. And this is one over i times the partial of f with respect to y. So whenever we talk about the partial of f with respect to y, there's no i in the denominator. And that's the difference there. In particular, we have two different expressions for the same quantity f prime of z. And therefore, the partial of f with respect to x is equal to one over i times the partial of f with respect to y. And z0. Okay, and so that's the forward proof. Um, the backwards proof, I'm just going to be a little bit hand wavy, but the backwards proof, what you can do is you can show that if this, uh, if these, these are really two equations as we've seen, but if these two equations are true, then it turns out that you can compute the limit of z minus z0 uh, is f of z minus f of z0 over z minus z0. It turns out that this limit exists um, because what you're allowed to do is if you think about just near a point z0, 
we need to think about all the possible paths that approach Z-naught. But actually, it's enough, uh, and this is the hand wavy part, uh, I'm not going to justify this, but it's enough to prove that you can actually think about any path that uses only horizontal and vertical segments. And the reason why that's important is that if you stay on a horizontal or vertical segment, that's exactly the things that we were doing before, right? If you have a fixed X value and then you're letting Y vary, that's uh, just traveling up and down along a, a point. So traveling vertically. And likewise, if you fix Y, but let X move freely, then you're traveling horizontally. And so if you're allowed to do both of those, and if you can prove that for any such path, then it turns out that F will be differentiable. So that's a completely hand wavy argument. The, the details are in the book online, but uh, but that's what I wanted to do for the proof of the Cauchy-Riemann equations.